So in today's video I'm going to do my absolute best to try and convey my opinion on something which is a really big thing at the minute, um, at least on the internet anyway and lots of people have been given their opinions over but I've got quite a severe view on it all and I think that it needs to be shared so what we're going to be doing today is talking about the ethics of having colour morphs and variations in the reptile keeping hobby. So recently the discussions have sort of focused around spider um, ball pythons or royal pythons whatever you want to call them um, and there has been some sort of referral to jaguar carpet pythons and enigma leopard geckos. Now, if you've been oblivious to this, which if you're watching this video, I'm sure you, you haven't been because it's been really quite high profile recently, but basically people have been sort of debating quite harshly on whether it is ethical to breed these particular morphs. Because in these instances, like, each of them has something like neurologically wrong with them and um, the biggest one really is the spider royal python which its head instead of like you know moving in a sort of normal serpentine way when they get excited starts to sort of wobble about and in some of them it is completely like just destroying to their daily lives whenever they sort of get excited about anything the head starts flipping backwards like that and then with enigma leopard geckos it's just similar just absolutely horrendous but still people think that it is okay to breed them now in this video i'm not going to bore you chatting about um those morphs again because you'll have heard it all recently um if you haven't well go and watch some other videos now and get yourself ed educated about it um but what i want to do today is really open up the conversation further than that because lots of things with lots of morphs are not okay in my opinion and i feel that they need to be addressed as well as just the extreme cases so what i'm going to start off by talking about really is what is a morph now it might sort of seem obvious for anybody with any reptiles what a morph is but to sort of give a definition to it so that we can sort of really start pinning things down is that a morph could be any sort of colour, size or pattern trait that is genetically linked and therefore reproducible. So for example a particular morph might make an animal have spots instead of stripes and then it can pass those down and um, pass that trait down to its offspring. The key thing to think about though is what is the difference between a morph and a genetic defect? Because well a genetic defect you would call really to pin it down something that is carried through the generations that would give an organism a reduced reproductive success so for example if an animal could see less well and could therefore not hunt as well and therefore it would be more likely to starve and therefore wouldn't breed as much um, and sort of other scenarios you can think of say an immunological defect where an animal is more likely to die of disease before having bred and therefore re um, reduce its reproductive success. In light of these definitions, that would put a lot of the morphs that we sort of recognise nowadays as being genetic defects in the wild environment. So for example, a piebald royal python is not gonna survive for five minutes outside of the captive environment because of just all that white coloration. It's just gonna be spotted by a bird or something, swoop down, python's dead and it's not gonna breed. And therefore, in relation to the wild type cousins, it is defective. However, in captivity, it is our goal as keepers to take away certain selective pressures that would affect wild animals, namely disease, um, lack of food, and, well, you know, the correct food provision, and also predation, so we don't have any predators in the captive environment. So, does that mean that it's okay to have every single morph that we want, even if in the wild it will be completely useless? Well, not exactly. Because reptiles have only really been kept sort of as mainstream pets for a very, very, very short amount of time relative to the billions of years of evolution they've had, 
The core evolved needs of a species are not any different in captivity to in the wild. So a bearded dragon like Char behind me who you can see running about, he wants to run around and guard his territory, he wants to climb, he wants to dig, he wants to hunt, whether he's in the wild or he's in a cage. If any morph prevents an animal from doing this, um, well, you can hear him digging now, but imagine if he was not able to do that, how, even if he could breathe and he could eat well if offered food from a bowl, how could you really say that he was truly thriving if up here he's not doing everything that he wants to do? That is not up to his psychological well-being or his physical well-being because he cannot be exercised in the way that is natural to him. So where does that leave our precious morphs? Well, the thing is really that most morphs don't really affect the sort of daily lives of the animal. So a hypermelanistic corn snake or an anorithristic corn snake or something in captivity can slither around and burrow and climb and catch its prey and smell for things just as well as a wild type one would. Now, in the wild, of course, the colours would make them stand out, but there's no predation in captivity, and they don't really recognise that there's no predation, but they also don't really think that, oh, I'm a funny colour, I'm gonna get eaten, you know, they don't think like that. Everything to them is the same, and they can do what they want, so as far as I'm concerned, yeah, it's perfectly okay to breed them. It's only when we start to mess about with things far too much that morphs become a problem. So if you're like heavy line breathing to get that red crested gecko, you know, reddest one bred to the reddest one in one generation, their offspring, the two reddest ones together, and again and again and again, and you're just, you've got such a narrow limited gene pool that basically the immunological health of those animals is just gone and sort of um, any defects that may have been hidden are just going to be exacerbated and so you're going to be left with unhealthy animals that cannot perform the functions that they want to do and that is not right. In some insta instances, like the extreme cases of the spider royal python and the jaguar carpet python or even the scaleless bearded dragon, the issues are just intrinsic to the morph. A scaleless bearded dragon cannot dig properly because it's just going to destroy its skin. Um, it's not as protected from UV light, so when it basks, it's more at risk of getting skin, skin infections and skin cancers. And that is just really is disgusting, in my opinion, that somebody can choose to inflict a defect on an animal for whether it be financial gain or personal opinion because ooh, it looks nice, that is just severely flawed. So take a look at this animal here. This is Char, my bearded dragon. And as you can see, he is not a normal. Um, he's, he was called a high red. I don't really care what name you're gonna give to the morph. He's just basically a funny orange color, whereas they're usually brown, but in any way, shape or form, he's really pretty much the same as a normal wild type bearded dragon, only he's got a different colour. Now, in captivity, that makes no difference to his well-being. He's not going to be picked off by a bird, as you can see he's looking up then because, you know, he's in captivity, but he still thinks in the same way. Um, he's still got those same fears and whatever, but where I'm heading to is that he can still run round, he has his scales, he can bask, he's got his claws, he can dig, he can climb, he can do what he wants to do. That, as a species, he's just evolved to just live like that. You take away his scales and he becomes a danger to himself. His claws are sharp um, when he's digging, which a scaleless bearded dragon is going to want to dig as much as a scaled one. They're just going to destroy themselves and going about in the UV because um, obviously they've still got the same needs for UV as a species, whether they have scales or not. They're just going to damage themselves and for what cause? The sole cause is that people are selfish and can't be bothered to accept the fact that these animals that 
may look astounding to us humans cannot function as I've said in the way they want to and that is just fundamentally wrong. So then, am I having a go at everybody out there that keeps sort of strange and funky morphs? Well, yes and no because it is up to your own discretion what is okay and what isn't. In the extreme cases of the Spider Royal Python, the Enigma Lapid Gecko, the Jaguar Carpet Python, Scaleless Beardies, it's just absolutely wrong. I don't see how anybody can see those animals as being healthy, as that being fair. They, they just cannot live in the way they want to, but they can function enough so as to pass the trait on and as I said earlier, where does a morph become a defect? That is a defect. It, you know, they can reproduce, they can have the same reproductive success, but that is only because of our influence. Their lives are not what they should be. But back to the chase, what is acceptable is gonna be different in people's minds, I know that, and I'm sure like in all honesty that lots of people could sort of gloss over this and not really think about it simply due to a lack of education not through people being evil because there must be so many people out there keeping like albino animals i'm gonna talk about albinos in a sec by the way and why i don't have any and refuse to own any but um I believe that really what needs to happen is people need to wake up and realise that everything they are doing is going to have some sort of an influence because, you know, lots of innocent people are told that, you know, an albino animal, if given the different, you know, different environmental conditions and any other morph really can thrive, thrive just as well as any other animal can but no definition of thriving is given and the issues that come along with certain morphs are not discussed openly because at the end of the day the people producing them are doing it for profit you know um, or it's sort of hard to explain because lots of innocent people do it just because they love it but don't want to own up to the fact that what they are doing is wrong not because they know it is, but because they haven't asked the question to themselves. Now that is not a valid excuse for still breeding these animals in my opinion. It's just sort of a barrier between it not happening. Um, so really, in my opinion, if you're watching this video and you have any inclination to breed a morph, well, think about it. Can that animal live in the wild way? Can it do everything that it wants to do as an animal? Not, can it, you know, thriving should not be defined on whether an animal can breed. Bre being able to breed is sort of simple thing number one alongside eating and defecating. If an organism can do those things, it will do those things. It is the things alongside those that give it a quality of life that are impaired by lots of morphs, but people don't really think about them in a very clear way, and that is what needs to happen in my opinion. So looking at that, whilst those extreme morphs can survive, and can breed, and can feed, and can defecate, and do everything that they need to do to survive, they can't do what they want to do, and that is why it is so wrong, in my opinion, to continue to breed them. Whether you like the colour or not, does not matter. The animal doesn't care what colour it is, it's got certain things it wants to do, and if you're going to stop that for your own financial, financial gain or personal preference, well, you shouldn't be owning the animal, is the bottom line. Again though, I do want to say that I'm not attacking people that do own morphs. If you're watching this and you've got an albino leopard gecko sat on your shoulder while you're watching it, I have no sort of quarrel with you owning that animal. I just don't think that it is right that we continue to breed them. If they're, you know, reasonably happy, reasonably healthy and whatever, then they shouldn't be culled or killed. 
that is too harsh a line. I just don't personally feel that it should be allowed to continue. And I think moving forwards, if you're getting other reptiles, you should really ask the question of whether is everything about this morph okay to allow the animal to live just as its wild type cousins would? If the answer's no, well, you should really reconsider what you're doing. To move back to the notion that people aren't asking enough questions before they jump into doing stuff, we really, in my opinion, need to take a look at albino animals, or albino if you're over there in the States, however you want to say it, um, because these animals do have a lot more issues than people realise, a lot more than meets the eye, and this is why I don't keep any, and I will not keep any, I'm just putting that out there because there are too many things that can and often are going wrong but people don't just realise. Now I'll throw some things up on the screen like of different things that can be going wrong with albinos but basically it boils down to incredibly poor eyesight, poor immunological functioning and also which is particularly important with our reptiles is um, UV protection due to that lack of pigment in the skin. So having red eyes, as you probably tell from the things I've been throwing up, is not just a sort of funky appearance thing, it can really impair how an animal lives. It may not be able to see as accurately, so it can't like hunt as efficiently, which yes, it may be able to get the food it wants, um, if offered it on tongs or something, but it can't hunt. The animal wants to hunt, it has hunted for billions of years, and just for the funny colours, us as people are stopping that. And then the animal may want to bask or go out into the light, but it cannot see properly in the light, or it hurts its eyes, and so it's driven to go in the shade, and it can't do what it wants to do, which I know I've said a million times, but I need to repeat it to get the point across that, yeah, they can live, but we're stopping them from living how they want to. Moreover, the key thing with lots of morphs as well as albinos is that reduced immunological functioning so that they're more at risk from getting disease. Now, as you can tell from my other videos, I am absolutely all in favour of trying to recreate the wild to the nearest degree possible without introducing the pressures of predation and disease and stuff um, in the captive environment because that is gonna, as I've said, allow our animals to live how they want to live as best as we possibly can at the minute in captivity. Now having impaired immunological functioning is really going to stop that because the risks, it is just inherent that the risks of reinfection in these types of enclosures are higher. It is definitely a downside to them. But if you have to keep an animal in purely sterile um, setups and that is just intrinsic to a morph, then is it really fair? If they have to live on solid tiles with disposable hides rather than having things they can climb over, climb through, climb in, um, dig through, you know, take the different scents, is that really fair? Now the biggest and saddest issue of all really comes from the fact that finance is absolutely paramount to this hobby unfortunately. Um, you know, rack systems do exist and they sort of have to exist in the current market because the cost of reptiles would simply be too, too high otherwise for the hobby to exist. And that's as far as I can see it. And then our hobby is built on morphs is the sad thing to say. If people were not enticing to, whoa, look at the colour of that leopard gecko whoa look how different that one is i can understand that honestly you know but that is what this hobby is built on and if we wipe if you know if we pull the carpet from under the feet of that the hobby is just gonna collapse so what does that mean for us as owners 
Well, at the end of the day, we have the most influence on anything. If everybody, after seeing this video, stopped buying morphs that are going to impair the lives of their animals, well, they wouldn't be worth anything and they wouldn't be bred. If people would be content to have duller coloured but much happier and much healthier animals, then their price for those might go up a bit, but surely that would be worth it to know that they are happy, they are thriving and they are healthy. Because whether you've got morphs or not, I am sure that most people keeping reptiles want the best for them. Whether they've asked enough questions or not, people aren't evil and I know that and that is why I'm not having a personal dig at anybody that chooses to keep particular morphs because I am sure you are not a bad person, it's just the case that people do not ask enough questions. So to summarise, are morphs okay? Yes, they are okay to a certain extent. The hobby needs them to survive financially at, at the minute with the current market demands. Um, and lots of morphs are perfectly fine, don't affect the way that an animal lives. I mean, every single one of the reptiles, well, apart from the line day geckos, all of my reptiles are a morph in some way. Charlotte Beardy Just There is what was called a high red, or may, may be listed as a, an orange tiger, whatever you want to call them, I'm not bothered, looks fine to me, will do. Um, my corn snakes are hypermelanistic, my leopard gecko is a max snow, and my um, crested gecko is a harlequin of some description. But the thing you'll notice there is none of those are particularly exaggerated morphs, they're all just single traits, um, and the only reason that I have them as morphs at all is because normals weren't available when I was buying any of them, and what I got is the closest that I could get to the sort of wild type, and to be honest, in some cases, you know, most of them I'm sort of impartial to how they look, but they look okay, and the bottom line is that they can function. In my opinion, it's only when the morphs do get exaggerated, when people are coming out with five trait combos for royal pythons, and line breeding for the reddest bearded dragon possible, that we need to stay away from that, and as keepers, we need to ask the question, can this animal live a happy life? Can I, if I provide it with everything that I possibly can, um, given current technology, will it be able to utilize that to the full? And will it be able to enjoy its life at the bottom line, which really means can it fulfill its core evolved needs? If the answer's no, then really you should be getting something else or reconsidering why you're thinking of getting a reptile in the first place. So, that was probably the most serious and, um, I don't know whatever you want to call it, video that I have ever done and I'm really glad I've tackled it. I know that I'm going to have upset some people and I'm probably going to get a bit of backlash for this video. But it is worth it, in my opinion, because, you know, you know why. Um, if you agree with what I'm saying, then you will understand why this video was necessary. If you don't agree with this video um, and why it was necessary, well, to be honest, that's your opinion um, and you can keep it to yourself. Now, as I've said, this video is not a personal dig at anyone. If you've got particular morphs and you haven't asked yourself the questions and you've honestly just bought them um, because you like them and you haven't asked the questions, I'm perfectly fine with that. You know, most people have done that. Um, a couple of years ago, I'd have done exactly the same because I didn't ask the questions. But it's just going forwards, that is something that needs to change and hopefully you can understand why. So anyway guys, whatever your opinions are, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Now, if you've got something you'd like to share or you'd like to add to what I've said, then please feel free to put it down in the comments, but please try and keep it nice. Don't be too harsh. Um, people do have different opinions and I do respect that. Um, it's just that this one, most people's opinions are wrong, unfortunately. Um, 
That is what it boils down to. But anyway, feel free to discuss things in the comments section. Um, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, with Char the Beardy being a cheeky little boy in the background, then please hit subscribe and I will see you next week for another video. Oh,